Welcome back to the Proverb devotional. We're going to continue in Proverbs chapter 6, verse 32, which reads this, but a man who commits adultery has no sense. Whoever does so destroys himself. Okay, if you pay attention to the context of Proverbs chapter 6 throughout this course, he's kind of giving us some indications that both aspects, both people, when committing adultery, suffer great consequences. Look up at verse 27. Can a man scoop fire into his lap without his clothes being burned, right? So just that aspect that you can't really take on something like that and not expect to, to get hurt yourself, to not harm yourself in the process. Can a man walk on hot coals without his feet being scorched? So is he who sleeps with another man's wife. No one who touches her will go unpunished. Okay. So obviously we can see off rip from a natural sense that this has connections to a physical adulterous aspect. And hopefully you're kind of catching the flow and the rhythm as we're journeying through this early setting of Proverbs, that there is a twofold aspect to adultery. There's the physical aspect and there's also the spiritual aspect and the spiritual aspect in this context is just simply saying that you will harm yourself. You harm your own soul when abandoning the teachings of God, when you abandon the word of God and the, the biblical way, the biblical narrative of how life is to operate. When you abandon Christ, you are harming your own soul by giving way to these false teachings, false doctrines, right? And the, furthermore, how you know it's false teaching and false doctrine is when you cling to the scriptures, when you cling to the word of God. Here's also something that I really want you to see. So we get the aspect of the spiritual adultery concept uh, that by committing this spiritual adultery, by leaving Christ, abandoning the principle and word of God, the biblical narrative, we lack understanding somewhere, right? We don't fully comprehend what it is that we were looking at, we were struggling with. And so because we didn't fully comprehend it, we bailed, right? And that typically happens with anything that we don't understand. Think about the emotions that come up when you don't understand something. You get frustrated, uh, you get angry easily, right? Uh, you're very irritable. You're, you're kind of really willing and able to just drop everything and go the opposite way, right? Because something isn't understood. With this physical aspect of this same verse, for, for adultery and adulterous activity, Activity to go down in any kind of way reveals a lack of understanding. And so we want to be willing to put ourselves in a position where we commit to understanding, not just the other person, but also commit to understanding the emotions and thoughts that are running through our minds that are greatly tempting us to move in that direction. I want to remind you that the emotions that you have aren't sins. However, we don't want to act on them. And I do believe that the closer you get to Jesus, you should want to begin to see changes over time of you no longer wanting to engage in certain activities that you once did prior to knowing and have a, having a relationship with Christ. But when it comes to this picture, I just want you to understand that it's a twofold thing. We want to get an understanding of the person that we've made the decision to commit to building and doing this life with. We want to find ourselves continuously growing with them and committing to understanding them. And we want to get an understanding of our emotions. Okay, our thoughts. We want to get an understanding of some of the temptations that are sitting in front of us and ask ourselves, wait, why am I being tempted to really step out of this right now? And maybe you're not even married and you're trying to figure out how this applies to you. Well, let's look at what Jesus says that actually makes up adultery in Matthew chapter five. Verse 27 says this, you have heard that it was said you shall not commit adultery. But I tell you that anyone who looks at a woman lustfully has already committed adultery with her in his heart. Mm. Adultery is not just the act of you having physical sex with someone that's outside of a covenant relationship. Jesus goes deeper and says, man, that starts in the heart. I might, might step on your toes a little bit. Maybe you're not married, but pornography is in the picture, right? Maybe like, you know, fantasizing about women and all that kind of stuff is in the picture. And, and trust me, I tell you, brother, I've been there. Like I, I, I lived that I had seven plus years of an addiction and due to God's grace and mercy and all of that, I was able to overcome that uh, and really get the help to overcome that. But I want to encourage you that be the reason why that is something that is still such a stronghold potentially in your life or in the lives of others around you is because there's lack of understanding because it's not just a, a Pornography problem. This is this is way deeper and it's at a heart issue, right? Because there's some people who don't do that with pornography. They just do it with legitimate actual premarital. That's still a heart issue, though. And maybe that's not that, but maybe it's maybe it's LGBT, right? I mean, that it's 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 no different, right? And so what we're doing, however, is really dealing with the heart 
aspect of it. And in order for us to really get past this and not continuously find a way to commit adultery at such a level, we want to be willing to get an understanding, not just of what we're doing, why we're doing it, and where it leads us if we keep doing it. Those things are important. Let's also get an understanding on the emotions that are in us. Let's get an understanding of the fears and the doubts, the temptations that are in front of us that lead us to say, this is okay, therefore I'm going to go do it. Getting an understanding of that is actually what will allow us to make sense of the struggle and then furthermore be willing to meditate on that when that temptation comes back, when that thought comes back. We, we have some outlets mainly through our understanding that lets us know, okay, that's just what I'm thinking. I don't have to obey it. I'm set free by God. So I don't have to be a slave to that thought. I don't have to be a slave to that sin. I don't have to be a slave to that. So I can put some practical steps in place, blocking off your socials, putting up firewalls on your safari, ridding of pictures, of messages, right? Maybe it's the music we're listening to. We want to find ourselves separating from that to be of most use and continue to grow in understanding and be in that process. And I, and I want to encourage you too, man, because again, I've experienced this from a longer duration of setting. Be patient with yourself. Have grace with yourself. It's a journey. Yes, you may have some relapses. You may have some times and moments where you're going to struggle, you're going to fight, you're you're going to be in a fight. You might have tears going down your face. You might have to stay up at night, right? To keep yourself from going into that mode and going into that space of thinking. We want to be willing to put up a fight and not just put our hands down and get beat the fluff up by our temptations and by our lustful thinkings, right? That we just continue to dive into. As long as we're willing to continue to put ourselves in places of logic and reasoning and biblical understanding, wisdom, putting God first, continuing to seek him, I think it's going to be hard for us to step out of something such as a marriage that we've invested in for some quick fixes outside of the marriage because we recognize and understand that there's already so much value here. And it makes no sense to abandon this. It makes no sense to leave it. But we get that from a logical perspective, right? Just like once we get to the place as we grow in our faith, as we grow in our journey, as we grow in our relationship with God, and as these addictions like pornography and premarital sex and sexual addictions, all those kinds of things start falling off the longer we pursue Jesus. We're going to look at that and be like, nah, I understand that if I do that, this is going to set me back and this is going to reset me and it's going to reset me. And I, I just... I'm tired. I don't want to get I don't want to keep getting reset, right? It just doesn't make sense logically. It doesn't make sense and and find ourselves in a loophole. And so as long as we're committing to getting understanding, I think that is massive in helping us overcome the bigger struggles that we're facing currently potentially as single people or even people who are in relationships and still struggling with these lustful uh, actions and surfaced actions uh that that are being participated in like corn and, and other things around around those. And so why is the addiction, the premarital pornography, right? Like as you're single and not in marriage, like why is why is it? What are you going to that for? What feeling are you chasing? Right? What emotion are you trying to relieve yourself from? Get an understanding on that. Because I think it gets harder for us to participate in those things continuously when we have enough understanding of not only what it's doing to us, but how it's not helping us. Because when you know better, you do better. And that understanding starts with the word of God and building our relationship with wisdom, with truth, ultimately with Christ. So I appreciate you guys oh so much for tuning into this video. If you like this kind of content, be sure to subscribe, like this video, share this devotional with somebody who you think could benefit from hearing it today. And as always, until our next conversation, be easy and be breezy, my friend. Peace.